In this video, I'll show you how to host a static website on S3 without enabling public access. We'll use four AWS services, Route 53 for DNS, S3 for storage, CloudFront as our content delivery network, and Certificate Manager for an SSL slash TLS certificate for secure HTTPS communication. Here we are in the Route 53 dashboard, but before we get started, if you know anyone that wants to take online Spanish lessons, I highly recommend Toragos Language Academy. I'll be using a real domain that I purchased with Route 53. You don't have to purchase it with Route 53. If you purchase your domain with Namecheap or anywhere else, that's fine too. But you will have to set up a hosted zone. There's not a whole lot to it. You would create a hosted zone and put your domain name in here. I'll link some AWS documentation and you can find tutorials on how to do this. You can also transfer domains to AWS if you want to do that. I'm going to cancel. Since I purchased my domain with Route 53, I automatically have some records that are created. We'll need to create at least two more records to make this work. And the first one is going to be created for us by the certificate manager. If you're ever looking, I have all these services pulled up here, Certificate Manager, S3, CloudFront, those are the ones we're going to be using. But if you're ever looking for a service, you can find all the services in here. But the easiest way, if you know what you're looking for, is to just type it in here in the search bar and click on the one that you're going to be working on. That's if you know the name of it. Request a certificate. Leave this public. Request. Put your domain name here. Before I go any further, I want to make sure that I point this out. To, for this certificate to work with CloudFront and S3, you have to be in U.S. East 1, this U.S. East Northern Virginia. If you don't pick this region, the certificate is not going to work. And if you accidentally don't change it, if it doesn't default to that, it's not a big deal. You can just delete the certificate and create a new one. But it needs to be in U.S. East 1. I'm going to put my domain name in here. And I'm going to add one more. This is optional. But if you know you're going to have subdomains, you might as well do this now. Or if you think you might, it doesn't hurt to do it. Even if you're not going to have subdomains, it doesn't hurt to have this wildcard in here to cover all your subdomains. Click Next. And just to be clear, a subdomain, you could be www.yourdomain, api.yourdomain, etc. We're going to click DNS. Because DNS is the easiest way to do this. There's less hassle, and it will automatically renew for you. Tags are optional. If you have a lot of certificates, it could be helpful to keep track of them. I don't, so I'm just going to leave this blank. There's a domain. There's a domain with the wildcard to cover all your subdomains. Confirm and request. These are pending. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we have to create a new record in Route 53 to make this work. And there are two ways to do it. You can copy right here and then go to Route 53, create a record, choose CNAME and paste that in there. Or you can click this button and let Certificate Manager do it for you. Do the same thing with the other. And I'm going to go back to Route 53, refresh, and there's the record that we needed. Next, we'll create an S3 bucket so we can store our files. Create bucket. See this global, no region selection. So whatever I name this bucket, nobody else using AWS all over the world can be using this bucket name. Chances are nobody's using my domain name, so I think this is a safe bet. The region here is not important like it was for the certificate manager. I'm going to leave the default. We're going to be using CloudFront, 
So all the content in the buckets is going to be cached. So the region really shouldn't matter very much. You can choose bucket settings. We're not going to copy any bucket settings from another one. So won't do anything there. Do not uncheck block all public access. Actually, if you want to, if you want to give public access, that's up to you. In fact, there is AWS documentation detailing how you can enable public access to host a static website. Some people do that. A matter of fact, a lot of people do that. But if you want to block public access, people don't need access to your buckets for you to host a website. And I'll show you how to do that with CloudFront. They'll have access to the contents of the bucket just indirectly. And that'll probably make more sense later if it doesn't right now. We'll leave all these default options here. Create the bucket. And there's my bucket. So nobody was using that bucket name. Before I add the files to the bucket, I do want to point out a few things. If you look in properties, all the way down here, static website hosting is disabled. And we're going to leave it that way because we're using CloudFront. And for the permissions, you can see block all public access is on. So there's no public access to these buckets and there's no bucket policy. We will need a bucket policy to allow CloudFront to access these buckets. However, there's an option in CloudFront to automatically create this policy. We'll go back to objects. This is object storage. You can treat, treat this like your root directory for all of your files. So whenever you upload your files, matter of fact, let's look at my project now. I've got a simple, very simple project here where I created, here's the HTML. All I did was put one image in here. There's the image and some minimal styles. And it looks like this. Here's my website hosted locally. It's just a picture. Go back to S3. Let's upload some files. Add files. And let's find my projects here. Here are the files that I want to add. Upload. You can also drag and drop whatever is most convenient for you. But there they are. There are the files. And if I try to click and look at one of these files, index.html doesn't work. Access denied. There is no public access, so even if you have a direct link to the bucket and the file, you can't see it. Which is what we want. Now that we have our domain and hosted zone set up, a certificate, and an S3 bucket with our files, we're ready for our CloudFront distribution. So we'll go to CloudFront, create a distribution. Let's find the S3 bucket for the domain. We're going to choose, we don't need anything in the origin path. We'll choose yes for OAI. And if you don't have any OAIs, Origin Access Identities, you can create one. Let's create one. Let's call it Doesn't really matter what you call it. Create. And there it is. It's that simple. Right here. Yes. Update the bucket policy. So S3, if we go in to S3 and look at back into the bucket permissions right now we don't have a policy cloudfront though will create one for us since i'm saying yes update the bucket policy 
most of these options, I'm just going to leave the default options checked. Redirect HTTP to HTTPS. We're going to leave that. Use all edge locations. That's up to you. You can limit it. North America and Europe if you want to. Just going to leave it as a default. Our certificate. There it is. It's the one we just created. Root object index.html. Let's make sure we haven't left anything out. Let's add alternate domain names. I'm going to put domain name there. I'll add one more. I'm going to use www. Take one last look through all these, make sure we got everything. We have the S3 bucket chosen. Yes, use OAI because we want to restrict the only CloudFront. We're not allowing public access. There's our OAI. Yes, update the policy. Redirect to HTTPS. Use all edge locations. There are the domain names. We've got the SSL certificate. We're all set. Let's create the distribution. Deploying. Now this can take up to 30 minutes to propagate. Usually it takes a lot less. However, it can take a while. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll let you know how long it takes. That ended up only taking three minutes. I've seen it be shorter, but usually longer. Let's copy our CloudFront distribution now and see if it's working. So there it is. We have a secure website. There's our CloudFront URL. Remember, this is the local copy, so it's the same website. However, my custom domain doesn't work yet. That's because we need to create another record in Route 53. These are the original records created when the host zone was created. The C name is validating our certificate. And now we need to create a new record, an alias record. So leave it A here, click alias. And we're gonna choose an endpoint point to a CloudFront distribution. And there is our CloudFront distribution. Going to create record. And one more, I'm gonna create one more record. I'm gonna create a CNAME record. This is optional, but I want to forward anything. Anytime somebody types www before my domain, I just wanna forward it to my domain without the www. Create record. So now if I go to my custom domain here, it probably won't work yet. It takes a few minutes. I'll check it. Not quite yet. I'll pause the video and let you know how long it takes. It ended up taking about seven minutes. But there it is. There's my custom domain. Same as the local website. Same as the CloudFront. And let's test the redirect. www. So immediately redirects to jamesschneider.net. And let's look back now. So we obviously have access to the website. We put our files in S3. We didn't give public access. We can look at that again. S3 buckets and jamesschneider.net. Let's try to look at index.html and we can't look at it. We can't see it. If we look at the permissions, blocked, everything's blocked. 
However, we do have a new policy. CloudFront created this policy for us, so we're allowing CloudFront to get objects. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. As a reminder, if you know anyone that wants to take Spanish lessons, this is an excellent place, Torgos Language Academy. There are native Spanish speakers with many years of experience, good prices, I highly recommend it. One final tip, whenever you update your content, let's say you change this index.html, you put something new in, well, since everything is cached around the world, if you want your changes to take effect immediately, what you would have to do is go to CloudFront, go to your distribution, go to invalidations, and let's say you wanted to invalidate all the cache, all the servers and edge locations that have your content cached, you could invalidate it, so then your changes would show up immediately. If you don't invalidate it, it's fine. Eventually, everything will catch up. But if you want something to take effect immediately, you would go in here and create an invalidation. Pretty simple. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.